Hello and welcome to another free code session. My name is Jason Bach and this is the last one I'm going to record for today, which is I'm going to do a store character instruction. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I am not. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a branch first, like I should, like a good little boy. Store character instruction. All right, publish and let's move on. So, or character instruction, which I believe they say is an S, right? Yes, an S. Okay. So I got string mode, fetch character instruction, and now store character instruction. Now what this does is it moves to the next character or the next Thing it finds. Okay. I'm not sure if this includes space. I don't know. We're going to say move next, but pops a value and writes it into position. To, what? Oh, so we have to ensure. Context ensure stack of one var values equal to context values pop. Okay, so we pop that. We move next, and this is where I kind of have to do what um, this is. Kind of something like that. So context of cells of the current location. What is this indexing off of? That's going to be equal to a new cell based What? Context cells index of context current, right? Equals a new cell of whatever the context current location is value. Except you don't like that, because we have to conv we have to convert that to char, right? Because that's what this is doing. Yes. Okay, that's it. That's all I got to do. Bob's your uncle. Simple, right? This shouldn't break anything, because we don't support it right now. I don't think. And if I run this, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so string instruction handler tests. It's store character, right? Yeah, so you're literally storing a character of whatever that value is. Okay. So what is that? What, you gotta make me scroll away the top here? Stack before. It's a stack before. Be a C store fungspace space position. Put. God, you suck.
So we're going to do QS. So we're going to make sure Q is there. I'm going to pop that value, I'll put it in there. We're going to move to the next. And whatever that is, that cell becomes a value. I can tell my brain is already starting to feel like it's melting. <laughs> you know? So, this becomes a zero, that becomes a one. So that's a store character instruction. And there was something with the math. They were sometimes looking at the Oh, because we want to make sure the stack count was correct. Huh, that's interesting. I can't have it actually... Um, yeah, technically this isn't correct. This should be this. This... Could I... Yeah, I think I can. What I want to say is context move, context next. Okay, in other words, just skip over the queue and then handle it and then do this. Okay. No idea what this is going to do. Yeah, you failed, that's for sure. Stack empty, multiple failures. Expected Q was the. Expected one, but was zero. Yeah, I shouldn't even be doing this. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, so. Do we even get to the one way to find out? Okay, so what's our context looking like? We don't have anything on the stack. Yeah, we kind of need to do that. Context values push. Convert to int array two of a q. Let's just assume that we push that there. Still fails. Fails. Let's put the Q as that. Okay. Well, let's see why. We ensure the stack, which this time we should have something there. Yep. And an 81. We're going to convert that into a Q. Remove to the next. And so now the current, which is a that, so context cells is going to be QS the QS b. But we don't change the current. Right. Okay. The reason we don't is because we haven't moved because the executor would do that. Um, Mm 
name of <sighs> whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that really matters here. I care. And then the value should be zero because we popped. Yes, it should be zero. There we go. There we go. All right, let's make sure that we're actually in release mode. Okay, run all the tests again. And if they all run, let's just do our... That, that's fine. That's fine. We are at 23 added star character. Yeah, I could be all wrong on this. I don't know. Possibly. Maybe. I gotta find more programs and that have like... You, you'd think with this being as somewhat... Um, as somewhat documented as it is, that would have like a suite of programs to say, hey, if you run this, this is what you should see. I guess. I, I think it would have that. You'd think. But apparently it doesn't. Okay. We're going to say that. Delete. Yes. Delete. Okay. I have to go tell my son something that his friend can play online, so I will be back. You know, I remember when I was a kid that I would organize with my friends and say, hey, you want to come over? Or, hey, you want to go do something? But for some reason, they have my wife talk to their mom. And I'm like... You guys are 15, 13, you have cell phones. I will admit that with this one friend, he doesn't have a cell phone, and I just, uh, but I still want to just tell my younger son, hey, you can call their house, you can text his mom, and you can deal with this, not us. Ain't our problem. So, anyway, um, where was I? Oh, yeah, I think I did all the things and the stuff. Yes, yeah, so now I can close this. Right? That's done. Let's look at one more. Let's see if this is possible to do in the time that I have. Only available pops one value off the stack. The value is near or negative. Why? It tells you far more than you ever really wanted to know about the underlying fund interpreter operating system and computer, and thus is your foster map. And it's System retrieval. Oh yeah, Y is gonna help. Get sys. Holy crap! Well, let's read this. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to actually do this right now. Um, Hmm, this is interesting. System execution instruction. Pops a string off the stack? How does it pop a string off the stack? <laughs> Each cell of information retrieved by Y only applies to either the current instruction pointer, the current environment, or the globe environment, the environment of every IP in the same front space of ours, which interpreter it's running on. After an execution of Y with a non-positive argument, the stack contains many more cells listed from top to bottom. So this would be the top one cell containing flags. Least significant bit, high if T is implemented, is this concurrent fudge. Bit one, high if I is implemented, high if O is. High if unbuffered standard. Are you nuts? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm not going to do this one right now. You are crazy. I mean, I, I will do it at some point, but I ain't doing that right now. Jump over. Is that possible right now? Can I do that? 
I'm not sure. So do this one as well. Jump forward. Pops a valley up to stack and jumps over that many spaces. If there's a one in the stack, J works like that does. So yeah, because you go one, two, and leave an empty stack. Negative values are legal arguments for J, such that if you did a minus four, so if you did a minus four, it'd be one, two, three, four. Wouldn't that just end then? It jumps over that many spaces. Oh, one, but no, you're going, you're going back. Because you've read J, one, two, three. The at sign is the end, end of everything, right? Yeah, I don't understand how that's an infinite loop. Jump forward. One, two, three, four. Oh, well then what did I have here? Wait, am I? So if you're here, and you have to go minus four. Jump over that, jump over that, jump over that. Well, what do we mean by jump over? If, you're, if I'm here, I go to one, two, three, four. You end. I don't see how that's a, an infinite loop. Unless I'm putting a 40. What the heck does a zero? Yes, we parse that and we push that. What does a math minus instruction do? We would just pop, pop. That. No. Well, okay, fine. You pop those, you pop those. You then put a minus four in the stack. Okay, that's fine. But now I'm on J, and I jump over four spaces, but one puts me here, two puts me here, three puts me here, four puts me here. I don't understand it. If I would go positive, one puts me here, two puts me here, three puts me here, four puts me here, and then that would be a negative and there'd be nothing on the stack. I don't... Jumps over that many spaces. If there was a one on the stack... Yeah, because I can see here, you're putting a two in the stack, you hit a J, so you go one. Why would it print nine? I'm just pushing a seven. I'm, you know, I'm going to... It would pop a two. You'd see a J. So you'd skip over one, two, land on the nine, and I'm done. <laughs> I'm done for the day. I either I don't understand how the funge really works, or these examples are bogus. Well, I guess if they say two here, and then they go, you're skipping one, two, and then you stop on that. So if I'm here and I go one, two, three, four, and then I stop on that, which would be J. But, but now there's nothing on the stack. You pop the value off the stack, and you jump over that many spaces. So I, I pushed a zero, I pushed a four, I did basically zero minus four, which is minus four. I do this, I go one, two, three, four, hop back to J. But now I'm going this way. There's nothing on the stack anymore. I pushed the two values off. There's nothing there anymore. I don't think this is very well documented. And this is what bugs me about this stuff is... 
might have to look at somebody else's implementation because I don't buy that. I mean, the first one I can kind of say, okay, fine, you move. You're at the one you're at. You move one. You move two. Go, you know, move, go to the next one. I guess. Then you get to nine. But that one, I do not understand how you get from four because you push to four, a minus four into the stack, but you pop that value off the stack. It doesn't say anything about... Yeah, you pop a value off the stack. There's nothing left on the stack after you're gone. So if you hit it again, how is that an infinite loop? You would hit minus, you'd hit four, you'd hit zero, but then you'd come to the add on the other side and you'd stop. I don't think that's correct, but I'm done for Saturday afternoon making episodes. So <laughs> I'm done. I'm done, 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 done. So I will probably hit these later. I mean, the system retrieval one is pretty messy. These two I could do, it's just I really need to understand how do they actually work? So, and I don't know if I have actually, like, push 14, push 10. I don't know if I've actually ever handled those. Um, I don't know if those are even character or those are uh, instructions that I actually handle. I may need to go through this list again and say, you know, of all these that I... Um, do you know? Do I do I really understand these? Do I, am I really doing this right? I'm not sure. Better go look. But I'm done. I'm gonna stop. So, thank you all for watching. Leave comments, and questions below. See you in the next episode.